I think we're all aware that the path that led Banjo and Kazooie to show up in Smash Brothers has been a very bumpy one. A lot of people know the bullet points of this story, but when it comes down to the finer details of things, I think people made their opinions very clear a long time ago. Banjo was good, and then he was bad, and then he wasn't Smash. The end. After the massive success of both Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, well, Microsoft bought Rareware for future game development. Didn't really work out as well as they would hope, but hey, that's going off topic. And hearing Banjo speak with the only understandable thing coming out of his mouth being Xbox is funnier than it has any right to be. Well, you are telling your time and gone into the Xbox <laughs> It's amazing. And remember when Masahiro Sakurai just told everybody to play Banjo on Xbox during a Nintendo livestream? Well, apparently that was enough to get the word Xbox trending on Twitter in Japan. This has nothing to do with the rest of the video, but I just find it hilarious. However, we did have another Banjo game pop up that tends to go unmentioned, Grunty's Revenge on the Game Boy Advance. After Grunty gets trapped under the boulder in Banjo-Kazooie, Klungo manages to build a robot to house the old witch's spirit, and her plan now is to kidnap Kazooie and go back in time to prevent the bear and bird duo from meeting in the first place and thus undo the events of the first game. Banjo, with the help of Mumbo Jumbo, goes back in time as well. And then, yeah, you, you kind of just do the normal Banjo stuff. Time travel is a pretty cliche plot device and this game doesn't really do anything with it aside from interacting with Bottle's ancestor, Bazai, but overall, the game's fine. I don't really have much to say about it, but it's actually pretty enjoyable. You go around these smaller sandboxes, collect notes and jiggies, get new moves, there are animal transformations. It's kind of what you would expect. It's actually pretty similar to the Spyro Game Boy Advance games. Those, in my opinion, nailed what made the console games good, just on a smaller scale. This game won't blow your mind, but it's not a bad one to add to your Game Boy Advance collection. It was also sort of ported to mobile as well with Grunty's Revenge Missions, and... Wow, terrible. And then after that, we got Banjo Pilot, giving Banjo his very own obligatory kart racing game. And it's, it's really not all that good. I mean, I guess it looks and sounds fine for the GBA, and it doesn't control terribly, but flying over grass slows you down as if you were driving a cart over it. That doesn't make any sense, and if it's one thing I play my Banjo games for, it's realism, so this cannot stand. Wow. Mediocre. Well, at least we'll always have its Mr. Pants. And then we jump to the year 2008. A new teaser trailer drops! We got redesigned Banjo and Kazooie. Okay. Sure. Alright, but by the looks of it, we got some more collecting goodness ahead of us. Yeah, they got the jiggy wrong, but hey, I'm still excited. It's been over 10 years at this point, and it doesn't really matter the quality of the game itself. Nuts and Bolts had a terrible reveal. It was years since the last game in the franchise. People were very excited, especially since now it's under the helm of Microsoft. So not only do we have an artistic change, which whatever, but we're getting a spin-off as well? Not a good look. It's the same reason why people still hate Metroid Prime Federation Force. Apparently, it's not that bad of a game, but it was announced when everybody was begging for a proper series continuation. At that point, this spinoff was dead on arrival and they couldn't do anything to stop it. But hey, Banjo made his glorious return in Smash Brothers, and thusly, I think enough time has passed where we can take a look at this game with a more critical eye, instead of just going, oh, it's different, therefore it's bad. That's not fun, and that's not fair. And besides, if you want to handle your Banjo-Kazooie fix, there's always ukulele. Listen, okay, I really like that game, and I feel like just mentioning it is going to piss a lot of people off. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, Spiral Mountain in glorious HD. Ah, this... this feels nice. Eight years after the events of Banjo-Tooie, we return to our illustrious heroes. Uh-oh. Banjo and Kazooie got fat. And oh no, Grunty's just ahead. Well, that's not really gonna stop this inevitable battle from happening once again anyway. Here we go! Ah, but no, of course, here we have a brand new character 
slash living breathing pong machine, Log, aka the Lord of Games. He created every single video game. Wow, cool. Thank you for the Nintendo Switch, I appreciate it. Despite coming out of nowhere, he takes it upon himself to settle the conflict by forcing both participants to compete in a series of challenges, like collecting shiny trinkets in a straight line in an incredibly boring way, before Log stops us and says, Gamers don't actually want this, they just want to shoot things. Because hey, if Rare didn't piss off their core audience enough at this point, this was the perfect way to do it. Log then gets our heroes back in shape, gets Grunty a brand new body, gives both parties a brand new vehicle, and then we jump into our brand new hub world, Showdown Town. And from there, we set off into a handful of different levels to complete challenges to get Jiggies, with the core motivation this time being whoever wins between the two then owns Spiral Mountain, while the loser works for Log's Game Factory. And all of our friends are here too! There's Mumbo, Humba, King Jingling, Oboe, Boy, everybody's ugly. Let's go ahead and classify this as a very common opinion. I am not really a fan of how these characters look. Apparently the idea behind these angular designs were to mimic a sort of high res low polygon look, but everybody just looks off. And the Jinjos look very very sick. My goodness, give these guys a prescription. Oh wait, so that's, that's what the Globos look like this whole time? Oh, they're gross. Jokes aside, this is a fine enough premise. Aside from the whole making fun of what made the original game so special thing, that was really dumb. The tension between Banjo and Grunty is really minor here though. I mean, she's there in Showdown Town the entire time just chilling out with her ugly cat that she has now for some reason. But this actually makes sense when it comes to the game itself. I was very confused once the adventure properly began. When you drop into the first world, Nutty Acres, there's this kinda cute little introduction scene emulating like an old sitcom opening style, which I did enjoy, but then I started playing and... It just seems all so incredibly empty with practically nothing to do. There was one mission to complete, a couple of Jinjos to find with side missions to go for, there are a good amount of notes scattered about for you to find and collect, and then I left. You see, it turns out that each world is cut up into a handful of acts, each one accessed by different doors that open up after collecting a certain number of jiggies, and you'll unlock later acts for any of the worlds throughout the game. You don't necessarily do them in sequential order. And I know that sounds odd, but the really weird thing is that there's nothing really different when you go into a later act. The missions are new. And that's it. I guess it was a way to gate you out of different mechanics, like saving flight until you're better acclimated to how the game plays, or you have access to more vehicle parts to mess with. But it's not like the missions are tied to story progression, it just feels like they took a handful of missions and scattered them about every single act, just for the sake of it. There is one act per world that's dedicated to going against Grunty, and then like, the sky is darker to make things more sinister. Ooh. But yeah, this whole act structure is very, very strange. And then you don't even get the jiggies immediately. You have to get the ones that you've already earned out of these dispensers and then carry them to the center of Showdown Town before they finally count. I'll give them credit, the car does have a great magnetic field that tries to keep as many jiggies on it that you can possibly fit, but why not just add them to your jiggy count immediately? But I mean, ultimately, leave it to Rare to be totally original with their approach to game design, I guess. This was my primary mindset as I started this game. Coming from the previous Banjo game style of progression, to just be dropped into such wildly different mechanics, methods of progression that I haven't really seen before or since, for the first hour or so, I was very confused. Once that wave of confusion finally passed, I started to understand just what this game is trying to do. The proper way to approach Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is to see it as more of a big playground rather than a big adventure. Listen, I know Grunty warned us about Banjo 3E and we still haven't gotten that yet, but I'm willing to let that pass. She was the villain after all, never believe what a villain says. Not only do you have vehicles to drive, but there's an entire vehicle editor to mess with too. You can modify existing ones or make entirely new ones, and it's fairly easy to do so. I think this whole concept gets way too much flack. It does not take long to get a good grasp of what each part does and what you need to add to vehicles to make it easier to succeed at your goals. Because not only do missions reward you with notes and jiggies, but also TT trophies, which you then give to this weird guy for even more jiggies. 
I don't like him. His name is Trophy Thomas, he goes by TT, and it just makes me want a new Diddy Kong Racing even more. I will never forget you, TT, and I will make sure everybody remembers you. While getting Jiggies is more or less never difficult, completing missions fast enough to get a trophy sometimes is. And it's actually really satisfying figuring out just what exactly you needed to tweak about your machine to get there. Or you know, you could just go ahead and continue using your not as good vehicle and hope for the best. All skill. You remember making gummy ships in Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, kinda like that. You remember LEGO Racers? Probably not, but yeah, it's kinda like that too. That's what Stop and Swap hooks you up with here as well, just a few extra vehicle parts. It's really not that exciting, but hey, at least it's something. You can, of course, play as Banjo without a vehicle, and Kazooie has access to this special wrench to pick up items, which is kinda neat, but it's really not recommended. It was mainly there to fix your vehicle if you screw up somehow. The game is very clearly built around being inside a machine. As for the missions themselves, well, they range from simple point A to point B races, there's carrying items, picking people up and dropping them off, some of them are based on combat, Honestly, things get pretty repetitive pretty quickly. There are some tweaks to the similar objectives that are spread across the entire game, and the area that you do the mission in is sometimes enough to make you rethink strategies that worked out well in the past. But it does not take long for the things that you do to stop being all that interesting. The enjoyment comes purely from the fact that knowing that what you're doing is because of the vehicle that you made. That's why when you come across the Logs Choice missions, ones where you play with pre-made vehicles, it's not as satisfying. I much preferred the player's choice missions, where I used my own creation, which I cleverly named Yeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Nuts and Bolts is really enjoyable. It's not mind-blowing, nor is it going to evoke that sense of wonder and joy that the original games did. But this is a pretty good game. It's just not a pretty good banjo game. As expected, you get enough jiggies, and then all the way up this slope where Log is chillin' is the portal back to Spiral Mountain, where you find the final two challenges. Oh, and yeah, the end of the game blows. Oh, I guess this is a proper banjo game after all. Here we have a mission from Log and a mission from Grunty, both of which require you to have a vehicle that's meant to work towards multiple goals. It has to be easy to control, but also have a big enough container to carry a big heavy object, but it's also gotta have guns and plenty of ammo. Oh, and now get through all of these rings in a fast enough time what is this? The game does require you to have vehicles to tackle different objectives, sure, but it does not prepare you to have something to tackle everything at once with no pause in between. And you gotta do it twice because the final battle with Grunty does the same thing. Oh, and during Log's mission, there's a bunch of quiz questions you have to answer too, because, haha, the other games did them, wouldn't be a banjo game without it. These missions would be fine if the game properly trained me to have a multi-purpose vehicle instead of practically rewarding me for kind of just winging it for the entire adventure. Yeah, this stuff wasn't great. This is very easily my least favorite ending segment of the three main games. The humor is still on point though. Regarding Stop and Swap, what was the name of the supposed secret link between Kazooie and Tui that some fan sites still won't shut up about? I mean, he's not wrong. The loser Grunty gets exiled to Log's Game Factory, and the winner Banjo gets a fancy new suit, the deed to Spiral Mountain, and just the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Aw, oh, but look at how happy he is! Sometimes, this game looks alright. Grunty teases us by saying she's making a new game, we all know how that went, and that ends Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Oh, and I almost forgot about this. Earlier, Kazooie asks for her old abilities just in case this game isn't successful. And Log is like, ah, uh, sure, although you may never get another game. Ha, it's funny because we never did get another game and now I'm sad. And now we return to the part of the timeline that more people are familiar with. Nuts and Bolts got decent reception, but it didn't undo the damage of upsetting a ton of original Banjo fans. He would go on to cameo in the Xbox 360 version of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, Microsoft made an official Banjo-Kazooie skin pack for Minecraft, Rare would go on to make a bunch of Kinect games, just making even more people mad, and then there was like this weird crowd-controlled Banjo flying game at South by Southwest in 2015. And I know you may be very confused by seeing this, but need I remind you what they almost did to Conquer? They almost massacred my poor boy. At least we'll always have Rare Replay. I know the Xbox One isn't everybody's cup of tea, but it's at least a great way to experience the core parts of Banjo's history. It's actually kind of a shame that Grunty's Revenge isn't on here. It would fit in just fine, and it would do a lot better than the other fluff in that collection. I don't think anybody would have cried themselves to sleep if that was on here instead of Lunar Jetman. I mean, I'm assuming as much. Maybe I just upset the entire hardcore Lunar Jetman fanbase. And? That's it. We have now, finally, more or less, gone through the entire Banjo-Kazooie franchise. We have five different games, four of which were proper adventure titles, across three different consoles, two major companies, and we have the one classic that started it all being a big enough of a deal that makes his inclusion in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate feel well-deserved. It took a long time, and it's not in the most ideal of circumstances, but he's home and it feels really good. It's been a bumpy road to say the least, but it's been interesting seeing all the different directions that Banjo has gone over the years. And if you haven't played these games yet, I think it goes without saying, but you should check them out. They're all very much worth your time. Except for Banjo Pilot, we can go ahead and forget about that one. It seems like Rare has done the same. They don't acknowledge that game's existence. I don't think anyone will really care. I like Mr. Pants better anyway.